function of two variable. In this video, we are going to learn what is a function of two variable, how that function is defined, and what are the domain of that function and the range of function. Before proceeding to the function of two variable, let's learn what is a function of one variable. Function of one variable means it is a function or we can say that it is a relation between a two sets x and y. Here x and y both are non-empty set and that relation is defined if we take any value from x that has a unique value in y. It means for every value of x belongs to the first set that has a unique image in y. Generally we are writing a function as y is equal to fx. What does it mean? It means it defines the relation between independent variable x and dependent variable y. Or we can say that for every input, we are getting a unique value as an output. In that case, we will say that this x defines the function. Whenever we are dealing with the one variable function, in that case, we have x and output we are storing in a y axis. Basically, we are dealing with 2D plane. Now, we are going to move with the function of two variable. The function of two variable is defined by this form. So, we are having a function that is depending upon two independent variable x and y and that output is stored in a z. In this case, the input variables are x and y and the output variable is z. Whenever we are dealing with the x and y variable, that is an independent variable, means we need two inputs. So, it means we are taking them in an ordered pair, x, y. Moreover, when we are defining the function of a two variable, we generally deal with the real valued function. Real valued function means Whatever the output we are having, that must be a real. And we are taking x and y as a real numbers. So we can say that it belongs to the R square, means x, y plane. Once we are taking any value from this plane, we will have an output that is stored in the z axis. And once we are getting into this coordinate system, it means we are dealing with a 3D coordinate system. Right now, this is a 2D plane. Now, once we will add the Z axis, we will get a 3D coordinate system. So, once we add Z, you can observe that how this 2D Cartesian plane is get converted into 3D coordinate system. The basic point in a function of two variable is a domain of that function and the range of function. Suppose we are storing the function value in a z and we have two input variable x and y. So we will say the domain of this function means it is a set of those points x and y from the xy plane for which this function is defined. That domain may be the entire xy plane or maybe some part of x, y plane. After substituting x and y, whatever the value we are getting, that is stored in a z, and the collection of all those values of z defines the range of this function. As in this coordinate system, this x, y plane, whatever the value we are taking for the function for which it is a defined, this is the part of a domain, and the corresponding values of the z that represents the range of the function. Let's understand with the help of example. Now let's find the domain and the range of the specified function. So we have taken this function as square root of 1 minus x square minus y square. So this is a function of x and y and output is stored in a z variable. Now we need to find for what value of x and y this is a defined. We know that square root is the defined 1 minus x square minus y square is greater than or equal to 0. 
So from here we will get the condition in terms of x and y that is this or we can say that x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. This indicates that we will take those ordered pair x comma y from x y plane that is r square such that x square plus y square this is always less than or equal to 1. In this case the domain is defined by this form. Now we need to find the range. If you observe that this is a positive square root, it means minimum possible value can be 0 because the 0 square root is 0. We just need to observe whether the 0 can be the part of the 0. Observe that if you take x square plus y square is equal to 1. In this case what we have 1 minus 1 and its square root. It's a 0 square root that is, is equal to 0. We can say that 0 is the minimum possible value in this case. Now the point is what is the maximum value in this case. From here some quantity is subtracted from 1 after that we are taking its root. We just need to find what is the minimum value of this quantity that can be subtracted from the 1. As this quantity is always greater than 0. So we can say that the minimum value of this one can be 0 for x is equal to 0 and y is 0. So it means if x square plus y square is equal to 0, we can write root of 1 minus 0 that is as equal to root of 1 and that is as equal to 1 and that is the maximum value we can have in this case. In this case the range is from 0 to 1 including the end point. Now let's observe from the graphic view of this function. Here we have the top view of this function. So we have taken only x axis and y axis. Z is, is equal to 0. From here you can observe that the minimum value is of x is minus 1 and the maximum value of x is 1 and same for the y minus 1 to 1. And it also satisfies that condition that x square plus y square is less than equal to 1. Now we need to check its range. Here we have taken the two graphs. From the first graph we have plotted the y versus z and in the next case we have taken x versus z. Here we have not taken x axis and here we have not taken the y. So we have converted this two variable into one variable y taking x is equal to 0 in this case and y is equal to 0 in this case. Now what is the range in this case? You can observe that the minimum value in this case we are getting as a 0 and the maximum value is a 1. Same in this case minimum value is a 0 and the maximum value is 1 that defines the range. Now moving towards the actual 3D form of this function. Here we can observe the graph of that function. The domain starts from minus 1 to 1 of the x and y and whereas the value of z is lies between 0 to 1. Taking an x function as log of x plus y. So this function is defined when x plus y is greater than 0. So we can say that in this case the domain is Select x comma y from x y plane such that x plus y is greater than 0. So this defines the domain of this function and in this case range of this function is basically minus infinity to infinity. Because we know that log function in one dimensional its value is also approaches to minus infinity as well as the infinity. So near to the zero this is approaching to the minus infinity and for very very large value of x and y this is approaching to the infinity. So overall in this case range is minus infinity to infinity. Here we have the graph of log x plus y so you can observe that as x comma y is approaching to zero the function is getting a negative and whenever we are taking x comma y as a greater than 0 and approaching to the 
large number this function is approaching to the infinite case do predict and find the domain and the range of these two functions 